Hi, I'm George Cow, and I'm here with one of my clients, Nathan Lively. So for today's short video, I thought that I would ask, uh, ask him to share some tips. Nathan is among other talents, he is a podcast expert. He has his own podcast that has had over 140,000 downloads. Which is, which is a lot, a lot, a lot. And uh, he's interviewed dozens of people on his podcast, uh, some of, the, some of the, the best experts from his industry. And anyway, he, he knows how to create a podcast, knows how to help people create it, knows how to help people market it. So Nathan, maybe share with us a couple of tips on uh, what, what you, some common questions, answer a couple of common questions maybe. Sure, so let's see. One of the most common things that I see people do is ask for podcast reviews on their podcast. And while that is valiant and important, I found that that never actually works. The only way that I've gotten people to give me reviews on iTunes for my podcast is to ask them personally. And while that might sound time consuming at the beginning, it could be the difference between, you know, one podcast review and 16 or 20 podcast reviews, which is a big credibility indicator when yes. people go to your podcast and they say, let me see if this is worth my time. Oh, wait, there's no reviews. Right. So when someone emails you or someone messages you and says, I heard your podcast, I like it a lot, thanks so much for your work, and you say to them, hey, would you mind leaving a review? This is a perfect time and it's worked for me a bunch of times. And I only learned that because somebody else asked me for a review and I emailed them and said, thanks for your hard work in the podcast. And they said, could you leave me a review? And I said, bingo, that's how you get reviews. Mm. So personal one-on-one -on -one requests is really the only way that I've gotten podcast reviews. So that's what I would recommend to people. And if I could add to that, um, what, how do you ask for the review? Because so, for example, like if you leave it really open-ended, it could work, but mm. would it be better to say, to make it easy, here's a quick format if you want to use this kind of script, you know, answer these two questions. What, what one thing did you like most about the podcast? And what, what kind of person do you think would benefit most? Something like that? What do you think? Uh, I just ask people, I say, could you write me a quick, so I make, try to make it sound easy, a quick podcast review. You could just copy and paste what you just told me in the previous email. Great. So I try to make it really easy. And a lot of times people do that because the email they sent me was, hey, I really like the podcast. I found that it's valuable. It helps me build the skills that I need for my job. And I say, perfect. Why don't you just copy and paste that into a review? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, one more quick tip. Uh, what was the other thing I suggested that we were going to talk about? Uh, you were going to mention the... Um, I'm forgetting now, actually. There's so many. There's, there's so many. Okay, tell, tell oh, you what. Oh, seasons? Seasons. Okay. Okay, Great. so I want people to start thinking more about their podcast in terms of seasons, uh, just like a television show. And this, the main reason is that I don't want you to start a podcast and think, I need to do this every week for the rest of my life. And then it's this huge thing weighing down on you. George is a good example of that. He started his podcast doing it twice a week for six months. And then he slowly was worn down. I burned out and I quit for a down. while. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then basically after six months of a break, I restarted it. And so you could say that that was a second season. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so make an editorial calendar or at least some plan where you say, hey, my first six episodes, here's what they're going to be about. Or at least here's the dates they're going to come out so that you stop. You have a stopping point where you take a break. And you say, this is the end of the first season. Let me see what results I got from this. Uh, awesome. Let me see what I can improve next time. Okay. Let me see what feedback I can get from my audience. And then people say, you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. You should. But people totally fine with you saying, hey, this is the end of the first season. I'll be back in a month. Tell them yeah, the date that you're exactly. going to be back. Or two and months then say, or whatever. hey, if yeah. you want to find out, or you want me to let you know when I'll be back. Perfect. Or, um, I'm going to email everyone on my mailing list the day before and I'm going to let them know. I'm going to give them a sneak preview of everything. I mean, it just opens up a lot more possibilities and I just see people getting kind of weighed down by the fact that they have to keep doing the same show every day or every week for right. the rest of their lives. Awesome. Awesome tip. Okay, so Nathan, if people want to learn more about you, how to work with you, where should they go? Uh, they should go to podcastmarketing.biz. That's .biz because the .com was taken. And I didn't so want podcastmarketing.biz. <laughs> yeah, podcastmarketing.biz. And if you go there and sign up for my mailing list, uh, I have a free list of all of the tools I use for my podcast production. So people are always asking me, uh, what's the software you use for recording, uh, editing, mixing, distributing the show? So I give away a PDF with a list of all the tools that I use when you sign up for my mailing list. Awesome. Thanks, Nathan, for sharing. And until the next video, everyone, be well.